Hi, Colin. Ray Han, I am absolutely delighted to be here with you. Welcome to Seattle. Thank it's such you. a delight to see you and meet your lovely family after so many years. Thank you. Millions of years. So I wanted to ask you, who is Colin Hayes? Who is Colin Hayes? Well, it depends on how far back you want to go. But we'll start with where you were born. All right. I was born in sunny Los Angeles, California. Fast forward about four or five years, moved to the lovely city of sunny Seattle, Washington. And I've made Seattle my home ever since then. I'm married to my lovely wife, Hei Jung. We have two delightful children, Harry and Emily, nine and 13 years old. And professionally, I've done a number of things, but most recently I'm hanging out at F5 Networks in Seattle, a pioneer in the load balancing space and in the security space as well for the data center market around the world. Having lots of fun there, but it sure is nice to catch up with you on all of the work that you and I did over the years, going back, uh, going back many years, back to 1995 in the telecommunication space. So. Wonderful to catch up with you after all this water under the bridge. <laughs> so, <coughs> what did you do before F5? And let's start with your college. What did you go to college for? Oh my, so college. <coughs> college was a mixed bag. I finished up here at the University of Washington way back in 1986 with a degree in economics. Before finishing that up, I had a chance to study overseas a little bit, studied in, in Germany and also in France. What did you study then? Uh, economics as well. Economics as well. And in fact, my first job right out of college in 1986, that saw me going back to Europe and working there for several years. My first job was working in Germany, basically doing uh, documentation, um, documenting uh, manufactured devices for a number of uh, a number of device manufacturers in the plastics industry, of all things. Um, but then later came back to the States, worked at Microsoft a number of years, went from there to Apple Computer. What were you doing in Microsoft? Microsoft, I was doing project management for Microsoft Excel for the Macintosh, of all things. Yeah, there were, in those days, Microsoft was very keen to expand into new markets, and new markets for them in those days were the Islamic Republic of Iran, Portugal, Greece. Uh, well, uh, there were, uh, of course, many countries in, uh, uh, well, Arabic-speaking countries, of course, where the Macintosh had a, had a booming business. So I was project managing the development of Microsoft Excel for the Macintosh for uh, Farsi, Hebrew, Arabic, Turkish, Greek. I'm forgetting one. What could it be? <laughs> Portuguese. Sorry. So those were my babies. Yeah. Stayed there for about four years, then went back to Europe and worked for Apple Computer for two and a half years or thereabouts, uh, basically doing more project management, trying to get Apple uh, evangelized all over the Middle East and also in Central and Eastern Europe in those days as well. So that was a lot of fun, a lot of travel, a lot of good times. And then came back to the United States in 1995 and that's when I met you. <laughs> all those years ago, 20 years ago now. So I mean, what made you work for ITL? ITL, well, you know, uh, this doesn't sound maybe very exciting, but I, if memory serves me correctly, I think that I responded to an advertisement that I saw in the newspaper looking for a business development uh, manager for a new platform that Joel was coming out with, which of course became FaxAway, right? Back in those days, the world's very first email to fax service or internet fax service if you will but i responded to the job and joel hired me worked out just fine yeah so that's how i got started in the telecommunication space come to think of it just by responding to an advertisement doesn't always happen quite that easily <laughs> why did you leave that job well, I was ready for some new challenges after three, four years or so. As I recall, we got uh, we got revenues uh, in thanks in no small part, Rayhan, to what you made possible through your 
uh, distribution network uh, around the world. But we, as I recall, I think we grew revenues when I left. I think that I think that annual revenues at Faxway were approaching two million dollars per year, U.S. dollars. I'm pretty sure. And so that's growing from nothing in 1995 to about two million per year after three and a half years. So at that point, was looking for some new challenges went to work for a company in the Seattle area called AVT, Applied Voice Technology, which uh, later on was sold uh, and is now part of the Open Text Corporation out of Canada. Uh, that along with the RightFax fax server that, uh, that they acquired as well. I think I'm remembering the details correctly, but yeah, I stayed with AVT for not very long, probably only two years at the most and then worked, uh, continued to work in the telecom space in Seattle, Envision Telephony, uh, and then uh, Concord, of course, for, for a number of years. And then finally, starting at F5, just, uh, well, four years ago, well, in, in five more days, it will be my four-year anniversary at F5. Wow. Yeah, hard to believe that time has gone by that quickly. And in the meantime, you also did startups. You did a voiceover startup. Oh yes, at one point I did. That was uh, <coughs> that was obviously in the infancy days of the uh, of the internet. So that's going back to ninety five, ninety six. That was. I mean, there's obviously the internet has changed anything and everything. Um, and as far as as far as voiceover production goes. Uh, what I was looking at in those days was essentially streamlining the way that voiceovers could be recorded and then also distributed. Um, but uh, didn't really focus too long on that before getting back into the job market, um, which is where I'm happy to be for now. Yeah. And what's next for you? Rehan, now after having a wonderful lunch with you and your family, I'm 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 looking forward to focusing on a couple of other things that I've started to dabble dabble in. Of course, we had a conversation over lunch today about uh, about video production and and also fusing vi notions notions regarding video production, but also fusing that with the idea of uh, of of language learning, specifically. Um, language learning targeting um, younger adults, young children, focused on uh, English as a second language or ESL. And so, um, so to answer your question, I'm not really quite sure, but I'm I'm very very passionate, just like you are, of course. I know for a fact um, about uh, uh, about teaching. My my mother was a school teacher for 35 years. God rest her soul, and she uh, she delighted immensely in in helping children to learn. Um, I'm, I, like you, am also convinced of the importance of really instilling really solid uh, um, English as a second language skills in, uh, in people around the world. Um, and I have learned firsthand through the years what a struggle it can oftentimes be when attempting to learn a foreign language. Um, I've, I've struggled over the years. Uh, um, to, uh, to learn a number of different languages and, and it is extremely trying. It's much easier for children, that's true. That's one of the, that's one of the saving graces of, of, of being a child when you're attacking learning English, but it still comes with difficulties. Um, it, uh, the, the difficulty actually, in my opinion, this is maybe getting off of the topic a little bit, but children in my experience they have routinely no major difficulties unlike us as adults in learning languages easily and picking up new concepts very very easily the challenge with children is is that just as easily as they learn new languages they also forget them extremely early uh, uh, sorry extremely quickly as well so one of the things to look at when you're wanting to basically help children to learn languages is how can you also give them the the tools uh, and give them the right incentives to not only learn but to keep coming back to be able to maintain the language skills that they build for themselves on the fly so anyway these are these are some things that I'm beginning to look at uh, again using using different media um, video of course, Facebook, YouTube, Vine is also extremely interesting for uh, extre extremely interesting platforms. I think for uh, for looking at language learning. Um, Brilliant. 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Colin. My pleasure, Rayhan. Please come back to Seattle soon. I've missed you over the years, and I really, uh, I, I really don't want another 10 to 12 years to have to go by before I see you again. <laughs> That's for damn sure. All right. <laughs>